We've given the devil too many pastors. We fail to recognize who he is. And some of us, we know who he is, but we won't deal with him. We won't speak to him. We won't talk to him. It takes power to get rid of the enemy. The enemy don't care how destructive your life is. He will keep destroying your life day after day after day if you don't stand in power. about negotiating with you. Some of us want to negotiate Deacon Henry with the devil. Okay, if you leave me alone for a couple of days. The devil don't care. He'll leave you alone for a couple of days and come back to kill you the third day. He's looking for people who don't want to fight. And the problem with us is we have went to sleep on our fighting skills. If, if you were fighting in the flesh, you wouldn't have an issue. Let me prove it to you. Can I pick on you? If I broke in your house and tried to take your baby, would you fight me? I thought so. If, if I broke in your house and tried to take your baby, would you shoot me? I thought you would. <laughs> if you broke in my house and tried to take my baby, I will fight you to death. We don't have a problem physically fighting. We, we have problems fighting here. And the devil has been to every one of our houses. He come at will. We let demons in and out of our houses. But yet we're not here. And we know it's a demon. You've been fasting four days. Somebody walk in your house and all of a sudden you irritated. Look, I'm just telling you, that ain't God. You can't be in the presence of God and all of a sudden get irritated by a demon. A demon walked in. The very fact that you're irritated tells you that something has entered the atmosphere. At that point, you have a responsibility. Number one, first thing we must do is identify the devil in his... It's not really the devil coming to our house. He has a kingdom to run, but he got demons. <laughs> the reason you can't identify the enemy is because you won't judge yourself. I, I knew that wasn't going to go over well. Let me just talk to you because you know how I do. The problem with most believers is they won't judge themselves. The first enemy you must identify is those that's working in you. Thank you, Lord. You must identify what's working in you. 
Let me help you. The Bible talks about the works of the flesh. Okay, let me, let me help the modern day church. If you're not married, and you're hanging out with your boyfriend, and y'all kissing and hugging, rubbing and scrubbing, there's something you need to deal with in you. You can't access power, Brother Henry, until you bind that demon in you. It is not all the time that you are possessed. Sometimes you're just greatly oppressed. You know you made plans. To go to the club, drink a few Henderson, get saved right before you come to church. There's something in you that's stopping you from binding demons that operate in your life. You got to learn how to get rid of guilt. You learn that when you're struggling, when you're really, really struggling, God gives you strength. That's right, that's right. You don't have to lean on no demons. You don't have to take advice. Uh-oh. Here, yeah, Lord. <laughs> this one in my nose. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I've never seen this. There's another reason power is not working. Okay. It's the advice you receive. It has notified the power of God to work in your life because it comes from another power. But you have to take, you have to stop taking advice from people who are half saved. Have sanctified. Lie till you still up for years on your page. Like, no, you're a demon, baby. We might have one member after this one passing. Well, I, I told the Lord, Pastor Tiffany, going forward, whatever you want. However long you want it. We might be here to four o'clock, praise the Lord. Three points, three points. Let me get to another three. Because what's happening is you don't understand what you're fighting. Pastor, Pastor Timothy, Pastor Teresa, Pastor Matisha, Job chapter 1, verse 12. Let me prove to you you have to fight power with power. If you don't fight power with power, you're going to lose. Right. I'm going to lose. Job chapter 1, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in my power. Only upon himself put no, not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. This is so real, Job. Satan is talking to God. He, Job said, have you considered, the Lord said, have you considered my servant, Job? The devil said, man, he got a hedge around his house. He got a hedge around his family. He got a hedge around everything that he owns. The Lord said, okay, I'm going to exchange and give you power and remove all the protection. The only thing you can't do, the only thing you don't have is power over his life. Give my power back. For some of us, that should have summed it up. Really, that should have, that should have just answered all questions. All that Job went through. 
And the Bible said there was a day that the sons of God, the sons of Job, were gathered and boom, a catastrophe took place. And all of his kids died. Why did they die? Because the power was being given to the enemy to kill them. Y'all still missing it. God transferred the power to Lucifer. And he lost all of his kids. Y'all still didn't get it. Pastor Rob, God transferred the power of all of his stuff to the devil. The devil wasn't playing patty cake. He killed them all. Y'all ain't going to get this. <laughs> the reason you're going through, God is trying to activate power in your life. God help me. <laughs> God help me. Oh, Shout out to Moshe. The reason you're in trouble, the reason life has shown up, is God is trying to activate power in you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Man, my mind. He gathered his disciples and he gave them all power. But yet, God took the power and gave it to Lucifer and Job in the book of Job. And all the chaos in Job's life was because the devil had the power. And the power's been removed from Job. Now, there was a day that Job got the power back. <laughs> Y'all, I'm going to have to teach a little bit. <laughs> when he got the power back, the Bible says that God restored all. Y'all, y'all still missing it. Uh-huh. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. All you really need is to figure out how to get the power to work. Notice my statement. How to get the power to work. Let me tell you what it's not until you find it. Let me know. It's not in a good shop. It's not in any emotional encounters you have when you come out of prayer. Come on, come on. <laughs> it's not there. What did I say? 818. Let me show you how powerful power is. Let me just hit something here and go keep moving. Y'all with me? Y'all praying, y'all praying, y'all praying. God is about to release me in here. Take the I know the bullshit. He's about to release something in here. Jesus. Pastor Patricia, read. Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may... Anybody having a financial issue? Anybody having a financial issue? Anybody having a financial issue? Y'all good? Y'all got enough money? We need to raise another offering, Pastor. These folks loaded in here. These folks loaded in here. Get the offering bucket. Ain't anybody having some financial challenges? Anybody? Anybody want more from God? All right. Let me walk you through it. Deuteronomy 8 and 18, he said he gave them power to do what, Pastor Matisse? Obtain wealth. Okay, he gave them power to obtain wealth. He gave him the ability to execute and attain wealth. Right. Guess what he didn't do? He didn't come down out of heaven and do it for him. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Y'all got to get this, man. I'm telling you, it changed his life. He did not leave heaven. In fact, God never leaves his throne room. We'll talk about that in a later day. He never left heaven to come down and see about your finances. He never left heaven. Come check on your money. He sent a word. Y'all missed that. Sent a word. Behold, I'm giving you power to attain wealth. What, he did. what else do we need to give you? Outside of the power. 
Problem number one. Let's, let's deal with Deuteronomy 8 and 18. The first problem you have is Hosea 4 to 6. This is why it's not working for you. Let me teach you. The first problem you have, the reason it's not working for you, the first problem, Hosea 4 and 6. This is why power don't work. Talk to me. Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed. For a lack of knowledge. Right there. Your money is on hold because you haven't gathered the knowledge. Not because you don't have the power. He already given you the power. What do you want him to do? Got real quiet. What, what do we want him to do, Pastor? Huh? Sitting before the Lord. Has, finances has been one of my issues in 2023. He breaks this down for me. He says, Deuteronomy, you know, the Lord don't quote scriptures to me. He'll just say Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Most of the time, I'm kind of familiar. <laughs> so I go and read it. So Lord, have mercy. Okay, you're giving me pop. And as I'm sitting there, Pastor Rod, I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I thought it was a logical question. <laughs> I really did. I thought that was pretty logical there. He says to me something I never heard the Lord say. You choose. I said, what? The choose. Once I gave you the power and you attained the knowledge, you choose what you want to apply to. What opportunity do you want to apply to? What destiny do you want to create? You would make a choice. The problem with us is we never go get the knowledge. We know that the kids are acting up. We know that the kids are out of order. But we never go get the power and execute the power to bring them in line. They ain't acting up because God told them to, or they acting up because the devil made them. Now, I still understand there's some learning going on there. But there's only two the spirit world God and the devil. That's it. We either empowered by one and attacked by the other. And the church said, Amen. Number two, we won't stay long, long enough to get an impartation from God. First King 19. Do we want the power? But we want the, sometimes we, we want the knowledge. I need to pray what is to pray. Oh, God help me. Ah, praise the Lord. We, we, <laughs> but we never wait long enough for the importation to take place. Yeah, yeah. The importation will come when God ordains it to come. Thank you, Brother Gray. And when it come, it will come from a servant of God. That's why you can't sit out of church. That's why you got to be in Bible study. God is a principal God. I said again, God is a principal God. He's not going to step over leadership to give you what you need. He's going to empower leadership to give it to you. And it's their duty, their responsibility to deliver. And if they don't deliver, God will deal with them. They never wait around long enough. For an impartation. Come to church. You can say. You can sanctify. And you stay around for a couple of weeks. And somebody tell you that. Oh you know God ain't all that. You know it, it ain't really working for you. And, and you, you don't stay around to get fully delivered. That's right. That's right. You get free from a couple of things. Big things. 
You get free from fornicating. You get free from lying. But you really haven't got free from backbiting, talking about folk, uh, cursing, drinking. You that's still over in the corner. Yeah. Preach, preach. And the reason you can't obtain what it is you want is because you haven't stayed around long enough to get the full power. First King 19. Elijah, the Tishbite, gets an assignment from God to go and anoint a list. He was plying with the yoke of oxen, doing what his dad had told him to do. And this is what happens. You get so busy doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, how loud you want to do it, pray when you want to, read when you feel like it, come on, come on. and you miss Elijah hitting you. Come on. Good word. Because if Elisha wouldn't have felt the tap of Elijah, he would have been in trouble. He would have missed the call. Because guess what Elijah didn't do? He didn't wait for him. Kept on walking. And the boy had enough sense to say, that was God. Let me go follow God in the man of God. Sometimes what you have to do is link up your buggy with somebody who know God. I didn't get here on my own. God linked me up with somebody who was chasing God. And I had enough sense to know my life was changing. I had enough, I didn't know everything about the Bible, but I knew I stopped doing certain things. I knew I stopped lying. I stopped cussing. I stopped chasing women. I stopped drinking. I knew something was right. And you let somebody talk you out of it, we can go to church. You let somebody talk you out of it, don't even believe in the resurrection. You talk to somebody that ain't been saved. Just claiming salvation because of the good. You lack power. Amen. Ain't mad at nobody but the devil. Tricking the people of God. I'm gonna stop here. We'll get the next next time I preach. Third thing that is absolutely necessary. You got knowledge. You have importation. Third thing, the hardest thing you ever gonna do, sacrifice. True power. Real power. Yeah, yeah. God changing power. Yeah. Only comes through sacrifice. Matthew 28, chapter, Matthew 28, 18. That's it, that's it. True power will only come to your life after you sacrifice. Because for so long, some of us have gotten comfortable in the things of God. We've gotten comfortable living at this level. This level would never allow the assignment of God in your life to be finished. It would never allow God to complete what he wanted complete in you. You have to move from level to level. And I used to think it was a cliche. New levels, new depths. Oh, man, go on with that pussy. I'm half crazy. New levels, new depths. Man, go on somewhere with that. Uh, 
until I took on knowledge. <laughs> when I took on knowledge, knowledge began to tell me that it was a rank and file of demons. Principality powers, wickedness, high places. I said, oh, Lord, I made a mistake. And guess what God won't do, Pastor Tiffany? He won't bless you in your ignorance. He's not going to bless you because you don't know. You need to know. The reason a lot of us don't know is we're not checking in with the Holy Spirit. That's good, that's good. The Holy Ghost is your God. Oh, I can't preach like this a long time. Let's go through Luke 9 one more time. Let me give you this and we're going to get out of here. Okay. Give me 10 more minutes. Read verse 1 real slow. I'm finna, I believe the Lord. In fact, I don't believe. I know the Lord is going to release somebody to walk in another level of power. I don't know who you are, but God is about to release you to walk in another level of power. From the throne of heaven. Read. Then he called his 12 Stop. disciples. You have to understand if you are committed to Christ, you have the ability and the authority to walk in power. End the, end the statement. No questions to follow. If you live for God, you have the power to walk in. If you're a disciple for Christ, you have the power to walk in. Walk in power. If you live for God, you have the ability to Today, walk. If you name the name of Christ, you have the power to walk in. You are a disciple. Read. And he gave them power. Stop right there. He gathered them and gave them. There's no more giving necessary. No more excuses. Walk in power. No more excuses. Walk in power. 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 Power. He gave them. Reshanta. Can the local Holy Spirit come? I don't say. I won't say. I don't say. I bind every witch. I won't say. I bind every warlock. I won't say. Every prince of power and every power. I command this atmosphere to be clean. I command this atmosphere to be clean. I command this atmosphere to be clean. Deliverance will take place today. Thank you.